I, uh, but for now, uh, we'll just use this. Um, I haven't been here for three weeks, and it's really tough uh, in terms of um, trying to be faithful, to go to church every Sunday, because I love the presence of God in this place. I love to be here. But the first week, we were we were able to go to a Reformed church. You know, we just want to go to any church in in Indo, um, on, you know, in, in, that is conducted in Indonesian. So we find this Reformed church. We're glad that we were able to worship God there. Uh, just in case you don't know, the Reformed people, they, they worship Jesus too, you know. So <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. And, uh, you know, GKI and all kind of thing. I love to be there. So I'm just so glad. That's the first week. The second week, we were in Amsterdam. I look up IFJF Amsterdam, and, and then I look at the Facebook and Instagram, and, and um, for some reason, they didn't have the right address. So we went to the church. It's just an empty building, and I was, I was wondering. I, before I went, I already, in, uh, you know, Facebook message, Messenger, the, the whoever that's going to answer, who, what time is the service? Where is it? So you be glad that our Instagram and Facebook in this church is all updated, you know. Over there, it's not updated. So I went to an empty building, and then after, you know, so I had to take a bus, get in no service, and I was pretty disappointed. And then suddenly, I, I received the fa- Facebook messenger. Oh, hi, how, how can we help you? And I'm sorry that I look at this message late. I said, okay, uh, well, we went to the church. I couldn't find the church. Oh, yeah, we already moved. Uh, the, the one that you went, uh, that was like uh, 10 years ago. What, 10 years ago? Oh, but but the, the pastor felt bad. Okay, where are you now? I want to see you. So we end up fellowshipping uh, with the pastor. It's a blessing in disguise because they pay for our dinner. <laughs> the third week, you know, we were in, I don't even remember. I think it's somewhere in, still in Netherlands. No, no, no. On the way uh, back to Germany, because we flew into uh, 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 Frankfurt, and then we go back home from Frankfurt. So the, we were on the bus, and um, you know, I wanted to join the Sunday service here online, but the, over there, it's already Sunday. Over here, it's still Saturday. So we end up following the, the, the Sunday service from IFGF Bandung, but it's not the same. You know, like when you do something online, the presence of God that is real, that you can almost touch and, and, and feel, it's not there. Because you just kind of, okay, they sing this song, uh, you know, and then now the sermon, okay. We learn something for sure. Uh, uh, God's word is never a waste when we uh, treat it properly. We treat it with respect, you know. So they, uh, Pastor Jonathan Kasmin, uh, from Japan, uh, preached at that time. So we, we received the blessing from the word, but the presence of God, in fact, we'll talk about that later on and, and after the sermon, and there's a reason why I share that story, because the presence of God is so important, you know? Like, we can learn all the theory or the moral, le- moral lessons, yeah, moral, is it moral or mor- moral? Moral, uh, good, good teaching, but the presence of God is so important, you know, it's something that strengthens your heart, make you more confident. Any, anyway, but before that, happy Mother's Day to all of you. Okay, uh, mothers, uh, one, two, three. Are you a mother? No, not yet. You are? Okay, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. How many appreciate uh, Ajes? You know, like, like... I don't know how many months now. Five, six, I think six, almost six. See, I'm I'm good, right? I I can guess by the size, uh, and and still uh, 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 leading worship. I'm good. I'm I have three times experience. So um, so thank you, I just for uh, really serving us. We, we can serve one another, right? Uh, for sure, in this church, we know how to serve one another. Um, happy Mother's Day. And I have to start this correctly because this is Mother's Day. I have to share something about mothers before we go into Joshua. Um, well, this past year is really eye-opening and make me really pl- proud 
uh, I was looking for a story to share this Mother's Day. Turns out that the story is not too far from my life because Tiffany is a new mom, right? It's been almost a year that I watched my little girl transform from, from a, just a little girl in my eyes into a mom. Like, I'm, I'm just amazed because we never, we never taught her to be a mother, you know? We, and she never have any experience to be a mother, right? And we never trained her and prepared her. But she seemed to adapt pretty, pretty uh, quickly. And, oh, it's there already. <laughs> okay, all right, no need for that. So, yeah, that's, uh, that is uh, mom and, and my little, new little girl now. Uh, the third, uh, second generation uh, of, of my, that's my first generation, my second, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, that's Naomi. Now she is able to stand. Almost uh, next month, we'll be celebrating her one year uh, birthday. So she's already know how to stand. and uh, So cute. I think in, as far as I'm concerned, she is the cutest baby in the world. I know that you think the same about your own, right? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, now uh, now she compete with Tiffany. Tiffany was cute uh, at one time, but now of course uh, the Naomi is more cute. So I'm just kind of wondering what prepare her for motherhood, right? No one teach her. It seems like she just morph into that being a mother. I'm sure uh, she had many challenges, but it seems like she is just kind of like taking it easy, happy, joyful. And I'm sure, though, as a mother, she had many sleepless nights, trouble, heartedness when the baby was sick, and, and nevertheless, she's a real mom now. So she is successful, in my view, in this transition time. Success. I think for a, a, this season of transi- transitioning uh, between being uh, just a, a, my little girl, a woman, into a mother, I think she's done pretty, pretty well. And, and I see all of you uh, who are mother here, you did pretty well too. I know that you had a lot of struggle, right? How many didn't ever have any struggle to be a mom? And, and the mom to be, there are two of uh, mom to be, uh, Priska and Ajay. So yeah, you'll have big, big fun and big, big headache. But it's all good because you can, you can do it, you can manage it. And for those of us, that's three times uh, 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 mom. Uh, yeah, I mean, are you about to become the third one too? Oh wow, you're brave. <laughs> you're brave. Uh, but uh, Nita, Nita is here too, or somewhere. In the back, yeah, three times a mom, and then, uh, okay, if you are only one time a mom, come on, contribute more toward world population. <laughs> yeah, you, you know that I, I read, um, the, who, how many know who, who is, or what is the country that has the lowest birth rate? Korea, Korea. Um, Japan is 1.3, Korea is 0.7. 0.7 means for every, every family, only they, they contribute less, 0.7, right? To break even, you need two, right? Because mom and dad one day will die, and then two people will replace mom and dad, two. Two is, you need to be 2.1 to keep the population growing. But Japan is losing 1.3, but Korea is 0.7. So I was wondering, like, wow, all that rom-com comedies that I watched did not produce any children? <laughs> you know? I mean, we, we watch a Korean movie, right? I mean, like, oh, so lovely, so romantic, no children. I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, um, they are having a problem. Um, and, and Japan too, by the way. Uh, um, see, from the, the, the point of view or perspective of social, sociology, People said that if you don't produce enough children, your, your productivity as a country, your GDP, they could gross domestic, domestic product, will go down. So uh, Indonesia is pretty good. Indonesia is pretty good. Uh, you know, like uh, they have to have KB. I, I don't know if KB is still the, the word at one time. You know, they try to hold the, you know. But Indonesia is experiencing what they call demography bonus, which means they are going to be pretty... Pretty, uh, pretty good. India, you know, another one that's going to be pretty good. China, by the way, it's going down because China is a little bit, uh, they don't have enough female. So if female, you want to have a husband, try China. Because they did not have enough female because of the one, one child policy, right, uh, before. Because, uh, and, and everybody want a boy because that they can help uh, with the taking care of uh, the income of the family. But so they, they abort all the girls. 
that's so terrible thing. So, you know, we're, we're so against abortion, right? Um, so never abort. If, even if you don't expect it, even I think of it as a bonus right? from God. God gives good gifts, uh, and you'll be so glad to have three or four or whatever that, <laughs> you know. So, so anyway, but that's not a topic of my, my, <laughs> my sermon. But I, my point about telling you the story is just to wish you a congratulation for the mothers. Happy Mother's Day one more time. It's a success for children, my child. It's a success for you. But I also want to tell you another success story uh, following in the theme of uh, stepping into the promise of God. And if you remember this year, we've been following the story of Job. Joshua. Everybody say Joshua. Joshua is a pretty important figure. By the way, the name of Joshua actually is Yeshua, which is the name of Jesus in the New Testament. It's uh, Joshua, Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's why we, we sometimes, the, the, the scholar, think of Joshua as a representative of Jesus in the Old Testament. You know, he did things that Jesus would do if Jesus was in the Old Testament, but of course, Jesus lives about, I would say, 1,500 years before Jesus. Okay, so we've been, we've been um, studying and following the story of Joshua, uh, and if you just uh, join us today, just a quick review, um, the Israelite, which is the nation at the time, God's chosen people were in Egypt uh, under slavery, and then God raised up Moses. Moses let the Israelite come out, coming out from Egypt 40 years in the wilderness. And then Joseph, uh, the Moses died before entering into the promised land, which is Canaan, which is the present day. Uh, it's a small part of Israel. Uh, at that time, Canaan is a huge area. Right now, Israel is small. And even then, uh, some people want to wipe them out. But anyway, uh, that's, that's Canaan before. It's called Canaan. And, and then before uh, the Israelites enter into Canaan, the promised land, uh, Moses died. And then Joshua got a commitment, marching order. Now you lead these people to enter into the promised land. I want to, and, and I said this is a success story. And if I can show you, um, by the way, the, the title is Trusting God. Trusting God to lead you into the promised land. So uh, we look at the end, start at the end. Did Joshua able to accomplish what God wants him to do? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Why? Because we read that this is Joshua talking at his old age. He was reminiscing, being nostalgic uh, about his, his uh, journey with God and in the past, and he was old at that time when he said, Things in Joshua chapter 21, verse 43, and this is what he said. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. So at this time, the Israelites already resided, resided in the land of Israel, the, I mean the, the promised land. The Lord gave them rest. On every side. Remember, they had to fought their way, or God fought with them. Just as he has sworn to their ancestor, not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. This is Joshua saying, God is the one that has fulfilled all his promises. And this is a success story. By the way, if you notice, none of the things that Joshua mentioned actually happened within the church. This is all outside the church. You look at the possession of the land, it's talking about what? It's talking about more property. It's talking about a position of power. It's talking about the, the fact that Joshua was successful in his career. He's talking about 
the abundance and prosperity that God promised. In fact, none of this has anything to do yet at that time with all the, the temple, the church, and all the things. I mean, a lot of us think that sometimes when God gives good promise, it's only limited to, to inside the church. Oh, what can you do for the church? What, can, what, what kind of ministry that will prosper? But when God gave promise, actually it's overall life. It's more than just church because our life, the whole of our life is lived within the church, meaning the church, not Sunday service, but the whole life. Every day of our life is a church because the church is a place where you worship God and you walk under his commandment and under his blessing. So when, when Joshua said something like this, he's saying, God, you, you actually gave all this to me. My career as a leader, as a government, political power person, that was successful. Look at the land that we have now, property, that is successful. Position of power, you know, none of the enemies were there at rest at that time. Rest meaning peaceful because all the other nation is afraid of, was afraid of, of them. That's successful. And so... I just want to let you know that when God promises you something, He does not only talk about spiritual things. He talks about everything. Amen? So, you see in this both story of Joshua that I just shared and the story of, of Tiffany, there was a success. God is, is fulfilling His promise. Tiffany is a, a child of God. We prayed continuously for her. And she married a very godly husband, very straight, you know, church-going person, very honest. I'm, I have to be honest with you, and I don't want to put myself in a bad spot here, but sometimes I think, like, you know, a little bit long-winded to get to what I want. This man, uh, his, his husband of Tiffany, is a straight Bible, whatever the Bible said, and he would not lie, he would not try to, you know, he just straight. I'm so glad that I have a godly uh, son-in-law like that to accompany Tiffany. But I see that God is faithful. And this is our success story, Joshua. And, and this is going to be your story also, also, by the way. Your story. This success story for Tiffany or Joshua, this, I declare, is going to be your story also because you have the same God. How many can say amen to that? All the success that God promised to Joshua, that is also applied to me. Amen? Because you have the same God. We talked about the same God a few weeks ago, right? It is true. All you need is to trust God's promise. Whatever that God says to you, you trust that. And so I want to talk a little bit more about what does it mean to trust God and to trust His promise. Well, let's break it down because sometimes we talk about promise and that word is so overused in the church. You know, promise this, promise that, God has promised, good thing. But what does it mean actually to trust in God's promise? Well, I'm going to analyze this. I'm going to break it down. Promise of God has three components, three parts. Okay? When God gave promise, He gave the plan, He gave the providence, and He gave His presence. The plan is, well, we're going to talk about this but I just want to, at this point, uh, say this. When God gives promise, he, he is not like a man, the man or, or woman or people, right? When we give promise, sometimes we just say, hey, I promise you to do this. But sometimes there is no seriousness and there is still a room for error and, and doubt. You know, are you going to be able to perform what you promise? And, and sometimes people change um, their mind, you know, you already promised, then, then, then you change your mind because, oh man, turns out that I have a situation that I cannot deal with at this time. Can we delay the promise? Can we, can we cancel the promise? I'm sorry that I make a mistake. You know, I offer speak. You know, sometimes daddy is like that. You know, fathers sometimes promise something to the child, the child, and then just because the daddy forget, too busy, and then the child is left disappointed. But when God gave a promise, He gave it in the full package. He is deadly serious about this. He is not playing around. He gave it in totality. So when God gave us promise, I want you to be able to hang on to it. Because that is 
the truth that is going to happen. He, you know why? Because he gave his word, which is the plan. Okay, the plan is, I want you, I'm, I want you to have this. I, I promise you to give, I promise to you that you will have this. That is word. But not only word, in order to get the promise, sometimes we have to do something. God says, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you all the resources. That's providence. So that you can get the gifts. And then not only that, he's not going to just leave you and just like a boss. You do this, okay? If you do this, you'll get the, you, you'll get the good thing. If you don't do it, well, it's up to you. No, he gave us his presence. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Let's break it down a little bit more in terms of the, the story of Joshua. Joshua has God's plan. Well, God actually gave Moses, his predecessor, the plan. You are going to lead these people out of Egypt into the promised land. That's God's uh, promise to uh, Moses. But then Moses lived his life, died, but then God is still faithful to his promise. His promise was the Israelite will dwell in the promised land. So then it continue When... Joshua's turn now. God says the same thing. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. That's the word. God gave the word. Josh, Moses, your teacher, your leader, He's dead now, but my promise stand. You're going to lead them now. Lead the Israelites. Go to the promised land. So, trusting God of his plan. What is God's plan? Well, God's plan is what he wants to do through you, and it's all good. I don't want you to think negatively, saying, okay, you know, God just want to use me. Because his plan is... He is so magnificent this way. He can work through you. He can bless others through your blessing. When, when he wants to use you, he's not like a man, you know, I'm going to just suck out all the resources of this person and I don't care what happened to that. You know, some boss is like that, you know, and boss is like, work, 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 work. I don't care about your family. I don't care about your career. Just work for me so that I can look good. God is not like that. When he said, I, I want to use you and I want to work through you, he's talking about, I will bless you first and then you will be able to bless others. It's good. It's good. It's wonderful that way. And, and that's what happened to Joshua, right? So that we read the success story of Joshua. At the end of his life, Joshua was successful. How do you respond when God gives you words? When God gives you his promise. You have a decision to make. When God says something to you, you have to decide whether you trust that or you don't. Because you have a free will. You can choose to obey and trust what God wants to do through you, or you can reject that, say, ah, you know what? I can choose myself. I can live my own way. Really, Trusting God is the first step in realizing all the good promises that God has for you. Of course, right? If you don't trust Him, then, well, I mean, most likely you will not do what He asks you to do. And when, this is for sure, when you don't do what He asks you to do, you will not get to His promise. You got to choose. You got to choose whether you will trust God or not. And I'm talking about faith. Do you have the faith? I can try to persuade you all day long. You, you need to trust God. God is good and God is this and God is that and God's going to do this. But you ask yourself, you have faith? If you have faith that God, the Holy Spirit, put into your heart, then you make a choice to live under that faith or to rebel to that faith. You can rebel, you know. You don't have to. It's not by default that 
that whatever God wants, God has. People said, God is sovereign, right? He can force me. He, yeah, he can, but he won't. Because love is always a surrendering of our heart in obeying him. He will not force us. You got to choose. You choose to obey. You, you want this promise. Or, you know, if I ask you, how many wants to have God's good promise in your life? Well, everybody say, yeah, for sure, I want. How many is willing to trust him? His plan, his word. For example, God wants us to be his disciple. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20 says, 19 says, go and make disciples. So this is the thing, right? God does not call us to, to just be a follower, sympathizer, church goer, church visitor, or just spectator. God called us to be a disciple. That's God's plan, by the way. That's God's plan. God wants you to be a disciple. So how do you respond to that? How do you say, yeah, God, I want, I, I want it because to be a disciple of Jesus, that means I will know the wisdom uh, of a teacher. I will know God's heart. I will know what he wants to me, for me to do. I will get the blessing of a disciple. I want or not. You got a response to that. Do you ex- trust God in accepting his plan for your life or not? And I pray the faith in you and the Holy Spirit right now is firming up your heart in saying, yes, God, I trust your plan. I trust your promise. I'm opening up my heart and surrendering it to you so that you can do your thing through me. Don't resist God. Don't rebel against him. Open up your heart because he has good plan. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I have good plan for you. It's not plan for calamity, but plan for your welfare, your prosperity. You trust him. Joshua did, and he was successful. Trust in God's plan. That's number one. I mean, you, you got to know his, his promise for sure, but whenever you discover his promise, instead of trying to smart and, and uh, you know, outsmart God and say, hey, what does it mean to, for me and how do I benefit for this? Because a lot of promises, it start with uh, things that, that not necessarily something that you can recognize as a blessing, but at the end, the blessing is there. So instead of responding negatively, oh, man, this is too hard for me. It's not for me. I, I want you to just by faith, opening up your heart and say, God, whatever you want must be good. Can you trust God like that? Trusting in his providence. Some of us are, are worried, you know, man, I, this, this Christian life is going to be too hard for me, too much requirement, too much rule, too much regulation, do this, don't do this, and that kind of thing. And, and I don't think I'm made up for that. I don't think I can, I can live like that. And I don't have enough strength. I don't have enough, enough knowledge of the Bible. But God says, don't worry. If you trust me, I will help you. I will provide for you whatever you need so that you are successful in getting the promise of God. The providence means that whatever that God calls you to do, He will provide the resources for you to do it. Providence, the resources available to us to accomplish the good promise, this plan that God has for us. When God calls us to do something, if it is God, He will make it enough for you to do it. He will give you the resources. He will give you the time. He will give you whatever you need, the strength, the wisdom. You trust God. That's what it means. You trust his word. You trust his providence. God is not some mean boss or mean person that asks you to do the impossible. He will do the impossible. You do the possible by his strength. Amen? How many can say amen to that? Yes, God, I know that you can take care of the impossible. I'll just do my part. You give me the strength and resources. As you are given resources, you employ, you use that resources to walk in his way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
God's providence. He can, we can have successful Christian life. We can have success in everything that you do. The word, and the Lord said to Joshua, you know, this is after he gave Joshua the big plan, right? You're going to lead these people into the, the, the promised land. And then he, God says this to Joshua, and, and the Lord says to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel. I want you to understand what does it mean to exalt you. Is it like position-wise? Oh, you're glorious now, Joshua. Actually, how will exalt mean put people in awe of you? How do you get to be in awe of something? When you watch your favorite uh, musician or singers, right, um, and go to the concerts, you are in awe of the, the what? The skills, right? You're in awe. Wow, luar biasa ini si Soyang. You don't know Soyang, it's okay. Um, uh, uh, let's see who, who I should... Uh, Soyang is really good, you know. He's a Korean singer. Yes. Dia, dia punya suara. Wah, wow, the, the Soyang. Huh? Jungkook. <laughs> Pokoknya mantap. You are in awe. Like... Wow, when I go to the concert hall and, and listening to the concert, I love to li listen to concert. Wow, I'm like, it's so beautiful. I am in awe because of what? That person can sing or play music so skillfully. I want you to understand when Joshua uh, was put to be exalted, God says, I'm going to exalt him, I'll exalt Joshua. He's talking about God is going to equip him that people will be in awe of Joshua. I will exalt Joshua by equipping Joshua with leadership skill, with wisdom, with strength, with power. God will exalt Joshua so that the people will respect him and will let him lead them into the promised land. God says, I'm going to do that. You think that you are short on resources? You think that you cannot do it? Of course you cannot do it with your own strength. But God is saying, I'm going to exalt you at your workplace. I'm going to exalt you in your family. You, you do not have an experience to be a mother, but I'm going to equip you to be a mother. You do not have the experience to be a manager because you've never been to, to be a manager before or a director before. I'm going to exalt you. I'm going to equip you. Hello? The equipment of God. That is a wonderful thing. Whatever it is that you think you need, to live a godly life, to get the promise of God, God is saying, I'm going to exalt you, I'm going to equip you. You're going to have enough, you're going to be able to do it, you're going to be successful. Hallelujah. The third one, and I, I believe this is the most important one. We sang about this today. When God gives you a plan and a promise, not only that he's, He gives you the word, not only He gives you the providence, He gives you His presence. This is the most important thing. You know, we can fail in our plan. We can lose confidence in, in our ability. But God says, it's okay. I'm going to be with you. Such an important thing that make, and, and Moses recognized this. One day, Moses and God was, were having conversation. And God says to Moses, you know what? I'm a little tired of these people. They always complain. They never trust me. Uh, you know what? Uh, I already make a promise for you, for your people to go into the promised land. But you know what? Just, just go there yourself. You want that anyway, right? You are more interested in the possession and the land, right? Okay, go ahead. I already promised to you. you, you you're going to get it. I'm true to my, my promise. But Moses understood then, and what follows is the most beautiful, intimate conversation between a God and God and human being. Moses said, God, you know what? Never mind. If you're not going to be with us in that promised land, don't send us up there. We'd we'll, we'll rather stay here. I'll just rather be in the place of your presence. All this property, land, success, power, that means nothing if you are not there. Wow. 
Moses, are you real? You've been struggling for 40 years, leading these 3 million people to experience prosperity. Now you're saying, and, and God is already going to give you that prosperity, but now you're saying, no, you don't want to go in there? That's what exactly Moses said. Joshua, no, did I? No, no never mind. My story is 10. That one is the one that's wrong. You know, well, I'm, I'm sure I read it down somewhere. I was probably, ah, Exodus chapter 33. Ignore that. <laughs> Exodus 33, chap, chapter 15. Okay, just so that you know. Exodus 33, chapter 33, verse 15. Then Moses said to Moses, then Moses said to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Wow, right? God's present. And by the way, Joshua was promised the same. Have I not commanded you, command what? To go into the land and lead the people. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you. That is the, wherever you go, that is the promise of God. I think um, you and I, we need to have the right priority. You know, sometimes we ask God for so many good things and then we forget about Him when He when he bless us with a house, with a career, with a big fat bank account, with a good position at work, and you said, I'm enough, I'm good, thank you God. And then you just don't remember him. I think it will do us well if we have the same attitude like Moses. You know what? All I need is Jesus. We sang about it, right? I want you, God, more than my success. I want you, God, more than my career. If you are going to be with me, then I'm going. If you are not coming with me, I'm staying. Because I want you more than anything, God. What is success without God? What is life without God? We sing this. I don't want anything but you. You are more than every dream come true. All of the things that I, though I want it, don't come close to knowing you. And then the very intimate word, right, in that song. Now that I'm yours and you are mine. Wow. Can you sing that and say, God, you are mine, I'm yours. Our love is the secret that I find. You know that secret place? I wonder if any one of you have discovered this secret place with God. Because there is a secret place with God. In your quiet time, you go to the secret place, the intimate place. I want you to discover it. If you have not, you discover it because the song says, I'll spend forever in the pleasure I found looking into your eyes in that secret place. In the morning time, can you come, musician? In the morning time, wherever, at night time, you try to seek God in that secret place. Secret place is not a place physically. Secret place is a place in the spiritual atmosphere when you are totally surrendered unto God and you are able to say what Moses said. If you're not with me, God, I'm not going. What is success? I mean, to be able to say that, I know it's hard. It's not easy. Right? To, to, to say anything does not matter, only God. It almost sounds like you are a fanatic, you are like just talking beyond your head. But if you find that secret place, you'll be able to say that. I guarantee you, you find your secret place with God. You will discover that He is more wonderful, more beautiful than anything that you can have in this earth. When God gives you a promise, this is just a quick summary. He did it with totality. Abis abisan. He's not just saying it, oh, I'm going to make you successful. I'm going to give you this or I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you eternal life. Abis abisan. Totality. He gives you a plan. He gives the providence. He gives you the presence. And he means serious business with you. Take him seriously. 
take him seriously. After all, for that promise, he came and died at the cross. Abis-abisan mangat. Would you abis-abisan dengan Tuhan? I pray that you would. You find that secret place, and and somehow in your spirit you will feel yes, God. There's nothing else that is more wonderful than you. You know this career, 30, 40 years, gone. Money, not gonna bring that with my when when I'm gone. It's gonna be someone else. My children probably. I don't know. My fame. 10 years after I'm gone, nobody will even remember me. But you, God, is my portion forever. Let's all stand.